what's up? It's the hostess with the most is Cassandra Calway here on the red carpet for the Casa fundraiser at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. This is how we do it. Hey. Hi, I'm Peter Page uh, from The Fosters, and you're watching The Cassandra Calloway Show. I'm the co-creator of The Fosters, and I was an actor once upon a time on, on Queer as Folk. And oh, that's what it is, Queer as Folk. I know I knew it. Now, as an executive producer, you're also being honored this evening. Yes, we are. Why did you pick the show Fosters? We, uh, you know, we, we had wanted to do, we wanted to create a family drama. We, we thought, well, what, what kind of family drama, you know, hasn't been done, isn't being done? Uh, we thought, well, let's do a non-traditional uh, uh, family and talked about doing two dads, then thought that was sort of being handled in other places on TV, came up with the idea of doing two moms and everything sort of grew from there. And now the two moms, the whole storyline is amazing. Now, where, what's the next arc? What's the next level? I'm not telling you what's happening on the show. Why not? Because I don't I tell we anybody. I don't tell my own parents Even what's we happening just, we on this show. Said, but I no, we were no, we're friends, but I'm still not telling you. I told you, I don't tell my family. Why cost? I, I, this is an incredible organization doing really, really important, vital work. They're advocating for kids in the system who need it more than anybody. You know, being a kid is hard. Being a kid who is unmoored, who doesn't have a, a home or a, a sense of family, I can't imagine anything harder. And these people step up, volunteer their time and energy to make sure these kids are heard and advocated for. Are you one of the CASA volunteers? No, I'm not. I don't have time to be there. It's a, it's a huge commitment. I have enormous respect for the work that these people do, but, but no, I'm not. Well, continue success with the Fosters. Uh, tell us your website and how we can follow you. Uh, I don't have a website, but I am. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at the Peter Page. It's Cassandra Calloway live here for Casa. We have one of the sponsors. We have the organization Share, and I'm just going to pass the mic. You are Karina Fields, Joan Kardashian, Chris Wallace, Joy Jolies, September Sarno. Okay, well, September, I like that name. All the names are just amazing. Joan, tell us about SHARE. SHARE is a wonderful organization started 64 years ago. This is our 64th show, and our mission is to help children in need, children that are suffering, and we love CASA. CASA does such a wonderful ch job with foster children, and we're so honored to be uh, honored tonight. <laughs> Exactly. So with CASA making sure that everyone has to do more than a year to give you that much time, you guys are going to com are you guys as committed to CASA as CASA is committed to the children? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you very much so. They do a fabulous job, CASA. We give it to them every year. We love CASA. So any of you guys foster parents? No. No. Anybody want to adopt me? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So um, why don't you tell us your website and how we can follow you? She's good. Our it's shareforchildren.org, share with the number four, children.org. Have you had Cher come to your event yet? No, but Cher the entertainer? Yes. Yes, Cher has done our show in the past. We have had everyone from John Wayne, Frank Sinatra, uh, any, any star that you've ever known has done our show. Okay, I do my research. <laughs> I want to make sure that, I, that I'm the best that I can be because you guys give the best that you guys do when you do what you do for us. Um, before we go any further, what size Spanx are you wearing today? I'm not wearing any Spanx. Mama has lost 12 pounds since January, so this bitch don't need Spanx. Oh, can I say that? Yes, you can. Okay. So the reason I bring that up because I just witnessed Spanx for the first time in my life. And make a long story short, I'm asleep and all I hear is boom. So I get up. I get up, Terry. I swear to God. I get up and I look and I see one of my family members. And hold this mic. Hold the mic. She's by the bed and she's like this. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she says, I have my daughter hold them like this, and then I stand on the roof, and I'm like, here I go! And then I jump off the roof and slide into them. It's a lot easier, though. They even have a, they even have a store in, on Third Street Promenade just for space. Oh, yeah. Oh, They're the secret. They're secret. They're not a secret anymore, I guess. But then what happens when you take them off? What happens with everything when it falls out? Like, what do the guy, what does the man or the you're woman say? You're stuck back with the ugly brown bird that you started out with. You put on your pretty peacock feathers for the night, and then you take those little things off, and you're like, oh, God, there's that brown bird again. Oh, well, okay. 
<laughs> but you know. Well, thank you for letting me share my Spanx story. I and I didn't even know, but because after watching stuff, I said, oh my God, I can finally tell my Spanx joke. And I'm also working on my stand-up at the same time. <laughs> the, fo <laughs> the Fosters, Terry, tell us yeah. about why such an extraordinary show for you. Um, it's an extraordinary show for me because we have touched so many and we have changed so many people's lives. We get validation every day on Twitter, every day on Instagram, every day. Um, we walk into stores, we're at our local Target, we're at Ikea, we're at the grocery store and people come up to us and say thank you, they hold you, they hug you, they, they cry, they, you know, and to have affected someone's life, to have changed their lives simply, excuse me, simply through um, something that you have, that you've been hired to do, it's no longer a job, it's, it's a responsibility and it's, um, it's, it's truly uh, humbling and um, it really, it really makes you stop and think. It's made us all stop and think and wonder. The, all of the organizations that we've been exposed to, that we've been witness to, that we've been honored by, that's a part of life that I didn't know anything about. And I'm 48 years old and it's like, oh, oh, wow. You know, the statistics in the foster care system, the statistics of the LGBTQ community is, is unacceptable unacceptable and so therefore we're here and we we will keep being here especially in this day especially in this day and that was my next question do you feel that the climate are we going backwards do you feel that the the the, the forward marches and that have been made for the lgbtq community no and i refuse to I, I refuse to believe that i think that there are a select few who would like to take us backwards? And the fact of the matter is, is that what is, is. And it will always be, and it will continue to be in the past, the present, and the future. You can try all you want to, but this just makes us dig in deeper, dig in harder, and we will always be, we will always be, we will always be. Nothing can ever change love. Nothing will ever stop love. Nothing will ever destroy love. That is what's going to exist long after hate, long after what is trying to be done right now. So no, we're not going backwards. We're just, we're tolerating. Speak of that word tolerate, which I hate that word tolerate. We're tolerating this right now because we know what really is. I, I, I just came up with this analogy. I, I'm, I'm going to put it like this. I consider him an extra small spank. <laughs> I think that's what it, I think that would be very painful. Very painful. Very painful. Uh, and and unnecessary. Unnecessary. Absolutely. Tell us your website and how we can follow you, Terry. Um, I'm taking a little bit of social media uh, uh, interim right now. Taking a little bit of a vacation. It got to be a little too much of um, a distraction, a little too much responsibility. I have a great deal. I'm a single mom. I got two amazing kids, and I've got a job. I'm trying to. Um, produce work for myself, become a producer, become a director, become a writer. So it's just, um, I love and appreciate everyone, but I've been trying to uh, to just take care of my own right now. Taking care of you. Well, you can do that. Thank you so very much. Thank you. So Thank nice. You. What's your character, Hayden? Uh, my character is Jude Adams Foster. I am the youngest adopted foster child of five kids. Um, and... Jude's whole storyline is basically him being a kid. I mean, the whole point of the show is really just a very unique family that you see more and more now in around the world, in your neighborhood, in every community. And this is just them going through and living their lives and dealing with a lot of a lot of drama. Now, one of the one of your foster brothers, I mean, one episode I saw uh, was having a seizure in an uh, ambulance. Yeah. Now I know we've, we fast forward now. Is he better? Right. How's that? Kind of well, so just uh, fairly recently, uh, Jesus, hey, the Jesus. yeah, yeah, one of the one of my older foster brothers had a seizure and now has a TBI. So a lot of the show, especially this season, has been about him working through his brain injury, uh, really trying to get back not only just basic motor functions, but going back to school, learning what he's going to do moving forward in career, dealing with certain anger outbursts. So. A lot of stuff, I feel like every single season, it gets more and more dramatic, more stuff happens. This family goes through so much more 
Uh, but yeah, Jesus just recently had a seizure, which has left him with a TBI. So he has been dealing with that and trying to understand what he's going to do and, and how to fix that and figure it out. Do you have a favorite mom of the two? Um, I think I have... I, 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 now, you can't tell them. I, I promise. Right. Shh, it's yeah, little, right. I'm trying not to fan out right now. Aww. Because it's not just the fosters, but I know I've... I want to say it was one life to live. Yeah, long time. It's been a long time. But anyway, but now we're, we're fast forwarding into the Fosters. An incredible show. It's breaking all kinds of grounds. Two mothers. I just interviewed a couple of the, 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 your, your, your children on the show. What makes this show so brown, groundbreaking? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about it as controversial. I mean, they did in the beginning especially, um, and groundbreaking. I mean, it's only that in the sense that we don't see it on the regular landscape of television. I mean, thousands of families are, are made up this way across the, across the world. And I feel like it's so popular because people are finally seeing themselves represented, which they weren't in the past. Um, it is, so it is groundbreaking in the sense that, you know, a lot of television, you've not seen this on television, but it's not groundbreaking in the sense that it is. This is what the world looks like now, so. And you normally see like the two dads, but to see the two moms and the way you guys communicate and the way you, you parent, I'm not going to tell you because I'm, ooh, I forgot the one. One of them picked you as the favorite mother. And I don't, oh. he's inside there, but oh. we, we weren't supposed to say that a lot. Okay. Casa, you know, why this organization? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's such an important uh cause to get the, the to get this visible to get the foster care system visible and to see what's really happening inside the foster care system I mean it's something I didn't know about before I joined this show it's not you know you just kind of hear about foster kids oh you feel like they're just taken care of and it's all fine but there's so many issues that uh, that people don't realize whether it's you know the abuse that happens and you know the people the kids that get their social security numbers stolen by their foster you know parents um, there's just endless issues that need to be addressed and and uh, we need to put a um, spotlight on these problems and I'm so proud that our show does that so well and represents the uh, the issue so truthfully because I actually I didn't know that much about foster care until watching the show to find out that there are 35,000 foster children here and you hear about some of the tragedies but when it's when it's over the top and we, we, you, you should have seen something sooner. Yes. So I say thank you for your work that you do and everything that you do on the Fosters. Can you tell us your website or how they can follow you? Um, follow me at SherrySom1 on Twitter and Psalm Days on Instagram. Thank you. Why you? Tammy, yes. um, first I'm going to say this. Okay. I don't know how upset I am with you because you didn't bring me to the bodyguard last night, oh. and I had to see about it on Instagram. <laughs> talking about Deborah Cox, I love oh you, girl. girl. She was amazing. You got hooked up, you know, you can hook me up with a ticket. I got, know, I got hooked up with the ticket, actually. So, and you didn't take me? You see, now I'm going to, you know, now I'm now, now more I, trouble with you now, huh? Now, now I had a gift for you. Don't you have, like, two dogs, no children? I, I have um, one dog now. Oh, good, now, because I have a, do a gift. This is just for you. You see, Tammy? So, wait, am I going to, will you, are you going to take me to the next event, Tammy? Sure. Uh, Tammy, um, because I know that you don't want to be responsible for any, their child, but you do have children. This is a, a bow tie that okay. you put around the collar okay. of your your dog, so that's from me to you. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So now let's just get into this. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you what a big fan I am of Casey. I'm yes. not going to tell you how you just watching the Disney number one show. Yes. How is it? What's going on, girl? Well, we, we have a lot of um, interesting things happening this season. And uh, one of the things is we're going to concentrate a little bit more on family instead of doing all the spy stuff. But that's so, so well, it is. We sprinkle it in there, but we're fun just as a family, too. What you trying to say? Okay, well, no, yeah, you are. Okay. You are, and I love Kadeem and you guys. Oh, are yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The whole energy of you guys, I just love it. And we are really like a family. We hang out in each other's dressing rooms all the time, talk about each other, you know, like families do. I was really hoping to come on the set and, like, I want to be one of the, like, a, like I want to just play with the gadgets. I want, <laughs> like, I want to put me on a rope and, like, Swing me through the air, something. Well, Can you I know get they're actually more fun on television, but yeah, I mean they look really good, yeah. But the, really, the once you get them, they're not as they're not as exciting. So just to throw a little wrench into your your happiness a little bit, <laughs> you're not missing anything. Well, okay, so. okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with that. You've been supporting this organization for a while. Why Casa? 
Well, I mean, a lot of the kids get lost in the system. I mean, there's only there's 30,000 uh, foster kids out there, and uh, an organization like CASA makes sure that they're not lost. They come and make sure they they have medical. They, they make sure that they are given proper treatment in, in terms of like tu tutorials and education and all those things. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of kids just kind of get lost, you know. So that's why. Well, we thank you for your support of CASA this year again. Uh, can you tell us your website and how we can follow you? Well, I don't really have a website, but I do have Instagram and Twitter. That's right, at Tammy Townsend 10. You can find me there all day. And Alan Francis, tell yes. us about yourself, please. Uh, yeah, I'm an actress on AMC's The Sun, the starring S Pierce Brosnan. Oh, yeah. okay, now you got to slow. Yeah, I'm touching. I'm six degrees of separation from one of the finest men on 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 in, in, in Hollywood, Pierce Brosnan. You know. Yeah. Now, how do you do? What what is the, what is the show about? Uh, the show, The Sun, is about turn of the century Texas. So it's 1915 and 1849, right before Texas became a state. And uh, I play Pierce's young first love interest, like the love of his life, a Comanche woman named Prairie Flower. And uh, it's so like, you have us yes. Playing oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a good at least they at least they're working with the right ethnicity to be because yes. Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra. <laughs> no, no offense, Liz. I love you, Liz, but uh, right, we're keeping it real and diverse. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so is, is, is it in the first season? It is, and we actually just got picked up for a second season. Congratulations, so we'll be, uh, yeah. Pierce Brosnan, cowboy. Now, yeah. what is it like being around all those men and all that? You know, I was raised around a bunch of guys, and my dad was in the Marine Corps, so I, it felt like home. Like, I was a little sister, and I'd boss them around a little bit. <laughs> Did you have to learn any like horseback riding? I did. You know, do you know? Oh yeah, it was great. I learned how to bareback ride, so that was awesome. And I speak three languages on the show, so I learned Spanish and Comanche, along with I speak English. So. I speak Spanish. Too. Hey, really? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. <laughs> oh, okay. You got, you got it down. <laughs> it's all Spanish, I know. And after that, I'm, I'm just done. I'm done. <laughs> You're awesome. You are the best. For sure. Why this organization? Why tonight? You know what? I, uh, I've i always been passionate about working with kids. I work with a lot of youth in the Los Angeles area, a lot of underserved communities, especially kids in the arts. And I think that a, an organization like CASA, where kids have a place and they work with these children who absolutely need that kind of support, that I don't think that they would get it elsewhere. I think that there are kids that fall through the cracks of the system. And to have an organization like this know that they have their back, I think that's so massively huge. And I do, I'm 100%. I'm native, Filipino, Caucasian. Like, I believe in community and that it takes, like, a tribe or a village to do something. And so I think that organizations like this allow that to happen. So that's... That's why I'm a big supporter of CASA, so, yeah. Thank you for your pure heart. Please tell us your website and how we can follow you. Uh, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at efrancis03. Uh, you can find me on IMDb or elizabethfrancis.com. Adventures in Babysitting is one of my favorite movies. Nice. I mean, I just have to say, it's just like, I can see my sit here now and see the hat and the cone, just the whole going to the boat. Just, I can just, I'm just reliving the whole thing. How many times do you hear someone mention that movie to you, Keith? I, uh, not enough, no. <laughs> it, it's the 30th anniversary of Adventures in Babysitting, and I can't believe 30 years has gone by. Uh, uh, you know, it's come out on the video cassette and the DVD and the Blu-ray, and I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. So now, are you doing anything like, you know, behind the scenes, director's cut type of things for the new DVD? We should absolutely get Chris Columbus and Elizabeth Shue and Anthony Rapp and Maya Bruton, Calvin Levels. We should get them all together for a, a DVD commentary. It's time. It is. Disney, come on, help us out. You gotta make it happen. Okay, so now I'm just brought that because I'm a fan. Uh, what other things have you been doing since, you know, in the last 30 years? What have you been other than marrying this beautiful lady? Uh, just enjoying uh, continuing to work. Uh, it's 41 years now in Screen Actors Guild, uh, and we just advocated for uh, a body of work uh, national membership in the Television Academy. We've been supporting uh, the golden age of television uh, with uh, going to a lot of events for uh, at the Emmys. We've also been going to the Emmys the last couple of years. Uh, uh, developing and producing and, and writing and directing and one of them features a lot of my former child star friends as well so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes we're looking forward to it uh, Casa 
the importance of having this advocate in between the social workers and the foster kids. What made you choose this organization? Uh, because it's a very special niche that can benefit a, a, a lot of kids and really only as many kids as they can get one-on-one -on -one volunteers to help them. So the mission here is to support a cause uh, where you really see uh, the feet on the ground in, in taking action. Uh, and it's, it's something that parents and uh, social workers, you know, a legal advocate can really help. Uh, and I, I know my family had supported foster kids uh, and uh, as a kid and that kind of, my mom was a very strong household. You did not mess around with my mother. And these were problem children that were brought in. Uh, and it, so just having someone strong in their life and parents aren't necessarily equipped to deal with all of the legal ramifications. Uh, uh, all of these kids are on a support system of some sort and we really don't want them to fall through the cracks. And that one-on-one -on -one person, so we, we just added 277 volunteers this year. We need to add, we need to triple that for next year. Oh, I, 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 I said, let's say quadruple that for next year. Tell us your website and how we can follow you, Keith. Oh, uh, KeithCooganOnline.com. You can keep, keep up with our shenanigans. And uh, uh, you're at PinkyLoveJoy.com. <laughs> she, she, she writes a little celebrity blog. No, and uh, uh, hers that. is it's much more fun to now. read than mine is. <laughs> and what's the blog? PinkyLoveJoy.com, but it's fine. Well, I'm going to start following it. Hey, Christian, how are you? Hey. Okay, my name is Cassandra Calloway. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, and nice to meet you as well. Now, I understand you're on Days of Our Lives. Yes, it's really cool. So, now, how long have you been acting? Since I was one and a half. Since you were one and how old are you now? Eight. Okay, and how many roles have you had since one and a half? What was your first job? One and a, one and a half? Um, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of jobs, but my first job was a diaper commercial. Oh, do you remember that commercial? Kind of. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, so now, other than Days of Our Lives, what other projects are you working on? I'm on The Bay on Amazon, and I have a lot of secret projects that I can't talk about yet. He's got secret projects already. Well, tell us your Twitter handle and how people can follow you. Well, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And, yeah. And you're, tell them your name again? Christian. And your last name, you gotta tell them the whole name, how they can find you, Christian. Christian James Ganeer. Christian James Ganeer. Thank you, Christian. Hey, what's up? My name is Cassandra Calloway, and this is Cassandra Calloway Show. Jasmine, yes. I understand that you did something like I did. And, when, and you did, uh, you moved to Los Angeles with a little bit more money than I did. You came with $2,000, I only came with 100 And I understand that by the time you got to the leftover audition, you had less than like $48 in the bank. Like so here, I'm gonna give you this $100 right here, right? So you're gonna take this. And pass it on? No, 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 oh, oh. read it, it's not real. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. So you take that and you're gonna hold that to that so you'll never be broke from Cassandra Calloway. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, wow, Jasmine, um, you started with the musicals. We're not even gonna go into the whole musical mm -hmm. thing because, well, you know, actually, I got a question for okay. you Hamilton or um, In the Heights? In the Heights. Okay. In the Heights forever. Okay, so then we're gonna do two, two, two Truths and a Lie or you wanna do the interview first? Oh. Oh, okay. Let's just. Let's, let's, let's play. Let's play. Let's go with two truths and a lie. Yeah. Oh, for me. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. I have been skydiving over the Great Barrier Reef. I like to drink mimosas in Mexico. I like to. Dang it, I should have thought of this. Ah! I, um. I had my first. I didn't get my driver's license until I was 17. Okay, well, which is not fair, but I'm gonna say that it's the Mexico and the mojitas in Mexico. Yeah. You know what? But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the truth here. You did this. You did this on an interview that I saw. That's how I know. <laughs> you see, so we because you see, but but the proper preparation. You know, make sure I, and I'm interviewing. Now you have the leftovers. It um, 140 million people just disappear, and and I'm not gonna give the 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 the. the the cliffhanger away, but just tell us about your character and, and, and your role you play. Yeah, I play this girl Evie, she's 17, 16, 17, um, and the family of the, the next door neighbors of the main family and when they move in the second season. And Evie, when we first meet her, she seems like the girl who's got it all together, who's really good at everything, respected by her community, 
good grades, choir, softball, gets along with her family. But by the end of the first episode, she goes missing. And so the whole second season is just based on finding her and her friends, where'd they go? And then she was kind of up to no good. <laughs> so now the, the cliffhanger is, everybody got blown up at the end. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us a secret? Will you be back? Are you allowed to spill a little? I mean, like leftover? some episodes oh, well, have some, aired. We need some leftover some here. You know, episodes have now, aired. Yeah. Some, okay. Um, Evie's back, but we don't know if it's really her or not. Okay. All right. So that's the leftovers, and that's on when? HBO on Sundays in the evening. I'm so bad at knowing what time. I'm I think it's sure. like nine or ten, 9 but they, they can go. They can go to HBO and figure that out. Now we're here for Casa. Why this organization? I had a lot of friends in foster care or just in rough families growing up. I grew up in Springfield, Oregon, and um, I just I know firsthand from their experiences that not having support and not having love behind them makes it harder to function, harder to live everyday life. And then so many kids hit a certain age, I think it's eight or something, and the chances of getting adopted go way down. And part of that is due to behavioral issues that are an effect of not having love and support. And this program gives kids advocates and tools and the ability to feel that support and love and then improve their chances of getting adopted, improve their chances of not bouncing around from home to home, giving them, improving their chances of just having a successful life and more opportunity. And I think that's very important. And the CASA volunteers have to guarantee that they're going to be on at least for two years. I mean, the social workers get to come in and out, but for those volunteers to give that much time, it means a lot. So I know you have other interviews to do. So other than leftovers, do you have anything else coming out that we can look forward to? Yeah, this summer on TNT, July 10th, premieres Will, a show about William Shakespeare's 20s, and I play the dark lady of his famous sonnets. And I just finished shooting Love, the Judd Apatow Netflix show. I don't know when that comes out, season three, but... Just wrapped that a few days ago. Well, we wish you much success. You enjoy your evening. Can you tell us your name and your website and how we can follow you? Yeah, my name is Jasmine Savoy Brown. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, Miss underscore Jasmine underscore Savoy, and Twitter, Jazz underscore Min Brown. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Well, what is the next uh, film you're working on now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I just uh, got an offer. I'm uh, doing a movie uh, in 10 days. I just finished a movie. It's a big uh, commercial film everybody know. I'm their celebrity guest, but they don't want me to say the name. Oh, okay. okay. So why did you pick this event tonight? Because they invite me, because it's for children. I just somehow, I, I think I'm always a child. And there's the innocence in me that connects to children. I think they're so vulnerable and so loving, so beautiful. They're the light of our world. So they need attention, need help. I think this charity basically is like the largest in the country, I heard. Yeah, it's like 30,000 people. 30,000 foster children in the 30,000, actually. Every year they serve like 5,000. I just feel like it's so great. Like everybody pay attention and help to support, have children, help children. So other than films, anything else you have coming out? Huh? Any other projects other than filming? Yes, I have so, so many movies uh, in the post-production. And if your fans follow me at Real Biling on Twitter, Instagram, because I make announcements there all the time. Plus, I give uh, fat-free, sugar-free cookies, which is a little wisdom. <laughs> little wisdom to, to my fans. So you'll like it. Thank oh, you keep great body. It's your anniversary. Yeah. It was a couple of months ago, but we're oh, here just, tonight. Yeah, last month, yeah. For CASA, um, you've been supporting this organization for years. Tell us why. Well, I think the foster care system in our country, you know, I mean, we're lucky we have that. These kids need a lot of help. But this particular organization deals with some of the, the, the children that keep going in and out of the foster care system and they move from family to family and uh, they are, you know, have a lot of problems and they make sure that they're treated right in the foster care system. So and this is a volunteer basis. Absolutely. So you know what, I know you got, you've got to do what you have to do, so I say thank you and congratulations okay, well, on your anniversary gift. Okay.